Encountering Wolf Tongue. The dream continued to echo for Young, and two years after his return to Europe, he would encounter the figure again in a fantasy of January 6, 1922. His soul saw and described the figure and informed his eye that the figure was a god and that he would fear he would hear from him again. The god needed to hear from him, as otherwise they both couldn't live. His soul informed his eye that he would reach the god again through solitude, coupled with reverence for the sun, moon, and earth, which stood for the masculine, the feminine, and the body, respectively. A year later, when Young was in Castanola, the figure returned once more. He had been with the dead and had seen Young's dead, his dogs, and his father. He stated that he was a wanderer who changed the form in which he appeared. However, he wanted to know who he really was, and he asked Jung's eye to tell him this, as it would free him. On the following day, Jung's eye asked his soul about him. She indicated that the first time she saw him, he had a terrifying beauty like Dionysus. On the second occasion, he had a deathly pallor. Jung's eye wondered if this was the self, the pleroma led to the question of how it could appear in human form. Furthermore, he couldn't understand why it wanted to be overcome and made determinate. Two days later, the figure returned, this time as a red-haired bearded hunter wrapped in, all, wrapped in animal skins. The figure reiterated his question asking Jung's eye to tell him who he really was. The eye replied that he was a god. As to why he overcame him in the dream of three years earlier, the eye thought this was because the god couldn't remain in a state of unknowing, but had to learn wisdom. Two nights later, he appeared again, this time as a sick pubescent boy who had taken the form of Jung's son. The boy suffered from a burning rash and requested treatment. The sickness had arisen from a dream. The boy had been wearing a mangy wolf fur and hunting with hounds. He had wanted to play with the bear cub and got the sickness from his wolf's fur. Jung's eye informed the boy that this was no ordinary wolf but a spirit wolf who had brought sickness who brought sickness and that this wasn't an ordinary dream but something that had actually occurred. The boy had been his own father the red beard, the hunter of wolves and men. Years later, recalling his encounter with his figure and describing it as a dream, Jung noted, I suddenly knew the wild huntsman had commanded it to carry away a human soul. A few days later, he heard the news that his mother had died. He realized that it was Wotan, the god of my Almanaic forefathers. Almanic forefathers, who had gathered my mother to her ancestors negatively to the wild horde, but positively to the Salig Lut, the blessed folk. Jung, Jung's encounter with Wotan was to reverberate in his writings, and it shaped his understanding of the social and political upheaval occurring in Germany during the 1930s. In 1936, he attributed these to the reactivation of the archetype, the archetype of Wotan. The presence of this figure was not restricted to Germany, but was an international phenomenon. The reemergence of Wotan in the present was a phenomenon that he himself had directly experienced. As further evidence of this hypothesis, as further evidence for his hypothesis. He referred to Nietzsche's elevation of Dionysus, claiming that biographical evidence suggested that God he suggested that the God he really had in mind was Dionysus' cousin, namely Wotan. This part of Jung's argument, which played a critical role in his understanding of Nietzsche and the reading of Thus Spoke Zarathustra in his seminars in the 1930s, was clearly shaped by his own encounter with this figure. In a seminar in February of 1936, 
Jung described Wolf Tong's attributes as follow. He is the god of oracles, of secret knowledge, of sorcery, and he is also the equivalent of Hermes Psychopompus. And you remember he has, like Osiris, only one eye. The other eye is sacrificed to the underworld. Therefore, he is an exceedingly apt symbol for our modern world in which the unconscious really comes to the foreground like a river and forces us to turn one eye inward upon it. In order that we may be adapted to that side also, we feel now that the greatest enemy is threatening us, not from without, but from within. So on account of all his qualities, Wotan expresses the spirit of the time to an extent which is uncanny, and that wisdom of knowledge is really wild. It is nature's wisdom. Wotan is not the god of civilized beings, beings but a condition of nature.